This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter. It's the show where we get geeky talk tech with the people using it in and around the Pittsburgh area, primarily, typically, usually. And uh, we are right here in the Mayhem Studio in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to chat with you guys. I'm, of course, a video producer here in Pittsburgh with the Sorgatron Media and Sidekick Media Services, documentaries, podcasts, pro wrestling, all kinds of fun stuff, marketing videos, uh, all, all kinds of stuff. So we're definitely around this stuff a bit. With me from Studio C, it is John Chichilla. Hey, how's it going today? Ooh, you're sorry, a little hot, a little hot. A little hot. Sorry, and I'm I'm actually a little sick, so I may my voice may crack and fold it, so, so, fade in and out. So it's best that you've been been ostracized <laughs> the studio C then, right? Yes, I, I have the plague. Ch- Ch- uh, Chilla, of course, is the uh, gadget guru at Big Bank International Incorporated Esquire, uh, is joining us here and giving us our gadget know how because he's hands on with all that stuff. Sometimes he's cagey yes, about the yes. source of his information, though. So. <laughs> I'm thinking he's sound. I, I try to. Never, I try to keep keep certain things anonymous. There you Never go. reveal your sources. <laughs> Knowing that is the uh, true journalist among the room is uh, Mike Pound of the Post Gazette, Mike Pound PG, or at Uncle Crappy on the Twitter. Either one. Either one. Uh, the Mike Pound PG is more. Actually, that's mostly beer stuff, but there's some uh, political <laughs> stuff and a little bit of tech stuff, and then who knows what you're going to get with Uncle it's, Crappy? It's, that's it's the important stuff. Because it has the beer stuff, yes. right? So. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And of course, how's the Beer Me show going? Uh, the Beer Me show is going really, really well. It is an um, uh, it is an insane time to be doing this now because so many places are opening up, uh, whether it's breweries or brew pubs. Or um, I, I, I just poured myself a glass of a Southern Tier, and their very first satellite uh, brewery and pub opened up on the North Shore, basically right underneath my office. Uh, opened up tonight, um, and it was great to see because they are they are jammed. They will soon have beer brewed in Pittsburgh available in that pub, and right now they have a whole bunch of stuff that's uh, brewed at the main brewery. Um, delicious, delicious things. Food's really good too. So, uh, so there'll be a show about that sometime here soon, and a bunch of others coming. And um, great time to be doing this. Awesome, good stuff. Go check it out. And definitely check out the series. Uh, amongst I know we have a lot of beer friends. <laughs> Uh, between you and should I drink that and everything like that. Right, so right. We'll, we'll get right into the awesome things first. Please go check everything out at awesomecast.net. You can uh, subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, or of course the video versions on AwesomeCast on the YouTube or the Facebook page. And the live stream is on the YouTube, I'm sorry, the Facebook page as well. Facebook Live we're using and uh, we are rolling with uh, Wheels and Krauss are joining us as they usually do and anybody else that swings around for our recording here at 7 p.m. Eastern time and you can also get there whatever technology we might be using now and in the future at live.awesomecast.net somebody was talking me into doing periscope i have not really gotten into that idea yet uh for for at least this portion of the show but actually it did tickle me to do some other things around periscope perhaps so as i experiment and keep changing things up to the chagrin of my producer uh please go over there uh live.awesomecast.net net uh you can also catch us every tuesday morning um on <laughs> rivers edge pgh.com uh thursdays 8 a.m after funny money and uh check out our friends over there I've, as as i said last week i've been using them a lot while i've been ubering and lifting um, um a little on the side and uh, it's been a nice interesting mellow uh uh you know uh, audio experience for me i don't have to really think about it and it's been pretty Nice for that. Also, thank you so much to our Patreon supporters. Of course, uh, at the Coffee Club $5 level is Matt Weller over there out east, the eastern side of PA. Uh, Matt 
one t underscore weller on the twitter and of course i'm a fan of the show thank you so much michael fedor i check him out mike fedor show on the twitter as well thank you so much for supporting the show if you would like to many uh, uh levels on there you get the super geeky awesome cast gold which can be anything from uh me uh getting really uh into the tech of my drobo issues or uh us um I'm watching pokemon duel download on my phone apparently today uh or or even some uh, podcasting help we were given uh katie a couple of weeks ago uh, as well so uh please go down you get a little bit extra content you get a little bit of inside scoop on what's going on around the show actually didn't the guys get didn't didn't they get a um or maybe we shared that in general on the patreon we shared a little bit of behind the scenes when we were building the studio at the beginning of the month as well uh you know so go there you don't you never know what you're gonna get and we're gonna try and get more stuff out to that as well hey producer missy's here too there she is i got i see i gotta work on we're not sponsored by arby's though Go just whoop 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 oh nope, nope there we go there we go uh she's uh joining and she's joining us as she does and we're gonna kind of work her into an integral part of the show that's better she's switching it up visually here what do you got there there you crystal go Chris, pepsi. crystal pepsi <laughs> that seems appropriate right so no 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 show off the crystal pepsi for sure all of like the, that all of absolutely the is that still a thing yeah it we, is we just found we just found some at the right aid when we're, we're, we're grabbing some stuff real quick so um that can be your awesome thing of the week <laughs> so i and i had never like just consumed it you know I, you know other than just like a bottle here and there so it was good to just like snag one I got, I got mine actually right here by you guys uh so you know so sure spot for pepsi yeah we kind of did an ad spot for the listen i'm so like old schooled out i'm drinking crystal pepsi i got my ninja turtle hoodie on um i'm really kind of kind of just living in the in the 90s right now i mean there's there's a uh a a, an nwo uh uh uh, nwo hulk hogan behind uh katie or missy there jeez i'm used to that being the girl on the show that i'm (laughs) mentioning i keep messing it up uh but uh there you go all right let's get into the actual awesome things of the week that we have actually Actually selected here uh uncle crappy um well this is the topic of the day oh, isn't it please tell me there's, please tell me there's an awesome side of what i'm seeing here the well it's there is because there are there are, are ways to figure this out for yourself and that's um as as we've seen in the first four days of the current presidential administration that is going to be an important thing uh, not not just for people who who oppose uh who oppose the current president too but um, uh, but, but, but for, uh, everyone on, 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 on all sides of this stuff the um, I did for context. I also do some political stuff, uh, at the newspaper. Um, one of the folks that helps run our, our political site called early returns. Um, so this is stuff that I pay attention to. And, and of course the, the uh, new press secretary started off with a bang with, uh, it's blatant lies about the size of the crowd at, uh, for uh, president Trump's inauguration. Not a really great way to start this, and and if it's that's an indication, um, you know, based on, on on that and what we saw from from Donald Trump during the campaign, it's going to take some work maybe to kind of ferret out what uh, what what is actually truthful, um, what is partially truthful, what is sort of political truth, and and what is an outright lie, as uh, as Mr. Spicer was uh, was doing at his first briefing over the weekend. Um, there are tools. Uh, fortunately for us, there are tools that um, we can we can visit to uh, that will that kind of check these stuff out. News organizations will be doing this more and more often. Um, I, I watched the, some of the press briefing today uh, on, on on Tuesday afternoon, and um, both MSNBC and CNN were were going to trouble to to kind of responding to just with graphics packages, but responding to things uh, that Mr. Spicer was saying as the news conference was going on, that that's going to become more prevalent. Mm -hmm. But um, when, when you're looking for context, uh, there are, there are a couple different places to start as far as um, uh, the really really straightforward political stuff. And I, 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 two of them, I think my, my favorite, uh, is called factcheck.org. It is uh, uh, done by the Annenberg Public Policy Center at the University of Pennsylvania. It is a nonprofit. Um, it is an academic site, um, and they are they, they tend to be the most thorough uh, of the, the sites that I'm, I'm going to highlight here. Um, and if you if you go to the site now, obviously there's a lot of stuff about uh, what what the Trump administration has done so far. There's also a, a really interesting and long kind of summation of uh, some of the um, 
uh, the, the times when President Obama had uh, difficulties with the truth over over his eight years. So it's not this is not something that is, is partisan in any way. That's a very important thing to remember. Um, but that's 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 my my favorite side of these three. Um, another good one as far as political stuff goes, although they have been questioned by the right a little bit as far as um, as far as uh, their. Uh, uh, whether or not they uh, have any kind of bias either way. Oh, it's worth noting that they've won a Pulitzer Prize, so that, that speaks well for them. Uh, that is politifact.com. Um, they're perhaps a little more accessible, a little more flashy, um, a little less academic, um, as you might uh, expect not being uh, attached to an Ivy League school. Um, but again, you, you go here, um, they will actually rate the issues, so you have a kind of quick and dirty look at, um, you know, okay, uh, Sean Spicer said this, he, that's a pants on fire. So definitely this, uh, this uh, political fact folks think he is lying. Um, and then there's another one, and this is, this is more subtle. This has less to do with, with um, uh, straightforward political stuff. Wait, 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 wait. I got to roll back. I got to roll back. There's actually a graphic okay. for plant, pants on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. There is. There is. Um, you have a little. You have a little meter that that kind of um, that that goes back and forth depending on what uh, the the level of truth. And it's and it's interesting that that these things have to have sort of there, levels of truth to them. There is there um, is a, a Trumpo meter in the works. Wow. Yes. Uh, which, yes. Which is good. Yes. I, and I think I stumbled across this. Like it, it, you know, big on you know Ooh. you know the, like a lot of lot are taking him to task on like okay what. You know, is he doing the things he promised? Basically, yes. you know, yes. which which I think I think he can do with any candidate uh, in the long run. And I think, and it's good to like this is a good thing that like you'll take them to the task for the things they said, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Absolutely, and, and it's and this is stuff uh, that will be important to watch because um, as we learned uh, during the campaign, uh, Donald Trump is is willing to kind of say things and then maybe he walks them back later or he denies it. He says them. Um, so to, to have these resources to where you, where you can find out, okay, is this correct? Is this partially correct? Um, uh, it, it, it's a good thing to do. We, now we all know Snopes and this is my last one, um, that I, that I wanted to, to bring up. Um, what, what Snopes has been around for a long time. They mostly deal with like, um, you know, kind of the, 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 the chain emails because they're concerned about, uh, you know, consumer issues. They deal with urban legends. Um, there's some celebrity stuff there, and it's and it's all very interesting and all very well done. More and more recently, they get into uh, the kind of political things. It's not the same as what what the other two sites do. And they're not really examining issue by issue, um, but they do look at uh, instances where they can kind of clear up misconceptions. And the one that I wanted to point out. Um, in particular, is, uh, is is something that happened, this, and this actually came to light like the day after the inauguration. Um, President Trump, on the on inauguration day on Friday, issued a proclamation. I don't know the wording right now, but it's something today of patriotism and about sacrificing for freedom and and all of this stuff and all Americans should do this stuff. National Day of Patriotic Devotion, and you read this, and it's you know it's kind of heavy headed language, and it's and if you're not a Trump supporter. Um, you might think, well, who in the hell is this guy telling me what to do with my patriotism? And and there was a lot of that reaction when this came to light, mostly the day after. Um, so what Snopes does is uh, it, it points out the fact that this is actually a fairly typical thing. In fact, President Obama, uh, on the day of his first election, um, he didn't, the, the day was called something different, but issued a fairly similarly worded a proclamation about coming together as Americans on the day that, you know, a new administration takes over and, and sacrifice and freedom and blah, 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 blah. Um, and it provides just some context. So where, where, where a, a Trump opponent might look at his proclamation and go, well, that's idiotic and, 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 and I'm insulted, but wait, president Obama did the same thing eight years prior. So it's good to have, in the interest of, of, of not reaching levels of hysteria or, or maybe kind of taking a longer point, a longer time to get there. It's, it's, it's good to have, um, whether it's, it's fact checking from the first two sites or just kind of historical context that maybe we weren't aware of. Um, it, it's, it's, it's good to have that stuff, uh, available to us. So, 
as we dive into this, and this is it's it's going to be an interesting four years. But do, as we dive into this, it's we we have these resources we can lean on a little bit. Do, do you think we'll get to a point? And I know Facebook's been in the news a lot about the the whole fake news and 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 things of that nature. Do you think we'll get to a point where either there there will be widely used browser plugins to be able to detect fake news, or do you think it could even get to the point much like where you get a I know Chrome and Firefox are really good at keeping an, an inventory of malicious sites or sites that may be misrepresenting themselves, where almost the browser, if, if not with a plugin, but the browser itself could kind of give you a little red dot or a green dot to say, hey, what you're reading is probably probably factual or it's it's definitely fake or if it's maybe if it's yellow you know it could be undetermined <laughs> you do the same thing pants on fire partially true mostly yeah. true oh, there you go true. yeah they, they need to have their own but, plugin that has the pants on yeah. fire right i mean absolutely yes, yes. And, and i think I, I i think that will uh that will be a thing over the next mm-hmm. four years i mean mm-hmm. news, news organizations are going to do this more often and and i think the technology will, will sort of catch up uh and and, and make these tools uh, more widely available um, as we as we get deeper into a Trump presidency, and it, and then it, whether or not he's a four year one term president, two years, this is this, this will become this this will be the norm. Um, yeah, we, and, and, and not just in politics. I, I think yeah. we need this for for all over the place. No, yes, we, yeah, absolutely. We get that in tech news too. I mean, absolutely. Like 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 mm-hmm. you know something that's kind of recycled or something like that. Um, and I'd love to see something because there was um, a chart going around. I thank you to P, for P Dutters on the um, on the on the Twitters for for pointing out because somebody had posted somebody else was talking about news sites and what should they watch and somebody posted a a, um, a graph that like kind of showed the the dissection of middle of the road and informative versus um you know right or left right and and it's nice to be like okay so these are the groups because i'm really aiming for this area right uh mm-hmm. and there was like another one that um some uh, some some other site did that was you know kind of like based on freedom versus based on these facts you know kind of thing um so i i, I would love you know as you know i've been very specific about if i see stuff on facebook i want to see less from this site if it's something that i think is a far right or left thing because i yeah. don't want that color and i think more people are very aware of that because the discussion and maybe people that didn't realize oh i'm really just kind of falling for it whatever my line is right and there's people that will and you know you know sit on whatever side of it and and just take in the stuff that they they want to right Mm -hmm. um like i'm i'm still gonna watch the daily show and that can definitely be kind of subsected into one section right Uh, but it's also more entertainment but it's kind of how i get informed at least in in some point because it filters through the satire i'm i'm hopeful we become more sophisticated uh in in how we consume uh, news and, and information, whether it's it's political or or across the board, um, you know, I, I I I'm hopeful we consider I, we, you and I we've talked about this before. Um, you know, consider what the source is. Um, you know, think about you know what what you're reading, how it is written. Um, is it definitely pushing a point of view, or is it presenting this stuff factually? It, it, I, I think that's. I'm, I'm hopeful that that's going to be a, a result of this of this big discussion about fake news. Um, Absolutely, that we're, we're going to think more about about what we're what we see and what we're reading, and uh, that's going to that's going to make us better for it. All right, thank you so much for that. You know, and, and this, this is going to be an ongoing discussion, and I hope you oh, yeah. have a positive spin on it. You know, for for this show. Uh, mm-hmm. So, apologies. We already had some comments like you're getting your politics and my tech, but it is. It is the internet. It is. It is. It is around this kind of thing. It's. So. it's it, this is. It, it is the the the, the best, uh, easiest available resources to 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 deal to deal with this stuff. And mm-hmm. it's and and if you want to be involved and you want to be an informed, uh, uh, whether it's a informed voter, informed citizen, informed consumer of news, this is this is the tools you need to use. Absolutely, John Chichilla, What is your awesome thing of the week? Less politically so, charged awesome thing of the week i'm hoping <laughs> mine's definitely a little less politically charged but yes. uh and, and a little it, it's definitely on the tech side but it, it's a little less of a, of a gadget um so i don't know if anyone watched the steeler game but after this after the steelers unfortunate loss this week um cbs aired uh their premiere episode of the hunted 
Um, it's kind of a game show where you're picked and you, you're in a team of two and you are forced to go on the run. Um, there's kind of four rules that, that you have to follow. You, you kind of become a fugitive. So you have to stay within a hundred thousand square mile hunt zone, which hundred thousand miles gives you kind of latitude to move around. Um, you're given a one hour head start. So they're going to come to you randomly and say, okay, you're, you're, you're on the go. And you have an hour before the hunters are alerted, um, that you're, that you're on the run. Um, you are provided limited funds in the first episode. It looked like you got a debit card with $500 on it. You were allowed to withdraw up to hundred dollars a day and they have an undisclosed command center. Um, and that command center after your hour head start is given your name, a photo and your last known location. And it's it's it was a it, it was a really interesting TV show. It, obviously, it's a little bit of reality TV, a little bit of game show. But I, I found myself and and I, I talked to Kraus and we we've had multiple lunch conversations about this show. Now you know what you what would you do? Everyone sits there and talks about how they were yelling at the TV and telling different contestants to not do something or go do this, and it. it seems to really engage if it's something you're interested in it's definitely engaging um and i i in, in talking to a lot of people everyone's like well, how do i sign up can i i almost feel like this is going to be like when survivor first started i think this is going to be another show kind of along those lines where people are going to get hooked and really want to follow the different teams um I, I myself am definitely interested and you do have to you have to make it 28 days um, if they can't find you for 28 days, you, your team wins $250,000. Oh, wow. Um, Holy crap. Okay. So, so it, like I said, the, the first episode premiered um, on Sunday after the, the AFC championship game. Um, they are doing a two hour episode starting this Wednesday. And then I think it'll be typically on Wednesdays for, for an hour. But definitely go check it out if it's something you're into. If you liked any of the Jason Bourne movies, <laughs> if you liked any kind of spy movie, it, it's interesting because after they kind of go to the command center where where they have a number of um, XCIA, XMI6, um, they have uh, psychologists, they're going through, they, they grab your name, they're going through your social media accounts to try to try to link you where you might be going, who's in the area where you were last seen that you might go to for help. Um, they have a tactical response team on the ground um, that they kind of send to the area. Um, they obviously have agreements with some of the cities and banks because they had access to the CCTV footage from around the different cities along <laughs> this with... Is, this is, this um, is kind of scary, actually. Yeah. So, so, along with camera footage from the ATMs. Here's, here's my thought on this. What you're saying is if you've ever wanted to think about being some sort of criminal, this would be a really good testing ground to see if you get away from the. the, 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 the <laughs> well, <laughs> actually, the, one of the first. So they, they covered, I think, um, I think it was six contestants in the first in the first episode. Um, and in that first episode, one of the contestants is a um, he's a lawyer. Um, a criminal defense attorney that's actually was once upon a time in a gang and has been arrested 14 times. Um, oh, wow. So if there's anyone that's been, uh, that has kind of an upper hand from the trying to stay away from law enforcement, I'm guessing it would be this guy. Um, but it, I mean, it, he, he's written an autobiography it, it, and they actually brought that up and, and we're reading some of that to try to, to glean information about his thought process and, um, but it, I, I guess you could say yes. If you were thinking about going on the run, you could watch this. But you're more or less going to find out what people fail at. Um, and I'm guessing they're not giving away all their secrets. But it, but it was definitely really, really cool um, to see the both the response team and the people on the run in action. Uh, by the Kraus, Kraus is uh, saying hunted for the win, by the way, in the chat. <laughs> so this, this, what's that? 
he's, he's, he's a fan. He's, he's a into fan. it. I it's might have to look into this. I might have to look into this. Unfortunately, CBS, which makes it a little harder to watch their shows sometimes, uh, but uh, or anything, anything CBS affiliated like CW and and Showtime. I'm finding a little bit too. Uh, but uh, they just do things a funny way. But uh, it's <laughs> so so. This actually kind of rolled into and and actually sparked what I think my actual awesome thing of the week is. Have you guys seen the movie Nerve? I have not. No, I have not. Have you seen trailers for this thing? Oh, is that is that the one where the two people are on the run and they're it's like a, they have to post to social media? And yeah, they, yeah. It's win. it's like the social media e game kind of thing, and again, kind of like you know, uh, it, it, you know, kind of feel feel similar in, in some aspects where you get challenges there's actually i love there's a scene with casey neistat uh who's a big youtuber in there as well and i'm sure there's some other cameos when they were showing stuff at the beginning and of course there's a dark turn it actually feels like a black mirror <laughs> episode you know in, in the long run uh in and and uh chachi had watched this in the theater and i i just grabbed the dvd from my library recently and it does it it's going to feel like a teen like romance-ish movie at the beginning turn into oh that's a nice fun quirky thing and then all of a sudden it's like oh this might be turning into the purge a little bit right <laughs> like like at first I'm like and even watching the trailer it kind of stepped you through all those and you're just like well how much of this movie is which of those things and it's literally like exactly what you saw from the trailer like those amounts like lovey dovey teenage stuff uh to to like kind of fun uh challenge you know you know you know dare kind of stuff to uh oh this got this got rough you know a little bit but not like the purge that bad right you you went a completely different direction with when you were watching it because i was looking at it going holy crap my phone they could actually be tracking that stuff on my phone and i like instantaneously turned my phone over and moved it as far away from me as possible because it it was it could happen. Mm -hmm. It also feels like um, I, I, I my, my thought during this. I don't know if I've really come to that conclusion, but it feels like this generation's hackers, too. Yeah. Like it was very kind of stylized, and 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 there was hacking. Uh, spoiler. Uh, so, but uh, but still, like like the internet as we think about it is this kind of social media cameras everywhere kind of thing versus the internet online computers as we knew it in what was that the late nineties when hackers came out yeah. is uh, yeah. was was something else and they had to kind of CG and do their own thing to make it you know like you know uh, visually interesting here they just could make it visually interesting because it's a very visual medium when these devices that we have. And it was also an interesting introduction for, for anybody who's not familiar with the dark net. Yes. I mean, very much stylized. I, mean, I do not know much about the dark net, but I need, I need somebody to tell me about their representation of the dark, of the dark yeah, net. It's just like, Oh, that's a thing that's out there. I wonder if that's what it's really like. Yeah, like you said, we we need to find some people who could be like, no, that's that's absolutely not. What and that's like. the other thing because that's where that's where <laughs> was it like three was it like three dimensional Linux or Unix in um, Jurassic Park? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't that bad. Man, that was some high end Unix back then. I but that, that, you, that uh, actually that that um, visualization in Jurassic Park was actually a plug in on certain. Um, high end graphics workstations, so that UI actually existed. It's just no one ever used it. Yep, exactly, exactly. But anyways, um, no, but I think definitely check it out. I think it really kind of rolls with what we talk about on the show and a lot of the um, social media kind of fears and everything like that. And we don't even touch on the dark net stuff because it's pretty rough. I, and I just thought of who I need to get. I can ask about the dark web. <laughs> so so uh, I'll, I'll do that a little bit off air. Um, so no, definitely check it out. It's recommended. I'm sure it's going to be on some movie channel or Netflix very, very soon um, at this rate. So so keep an eye out for it. It's definitely, if, if you catch it, it's worth checking out. So um, Missy. Is it worth what's is, that? Is it worth, is it worth $4.99? Um, I don't think you'll get mad at four dollars and ninety nine cents for a rental. Because that that's actually the purchase price on iTunes right now. Wait, what? No, you can buy it for five yeah. bucks. Yep, that might be worth a purchase. Oh no, for five it's, bucks. It's funny because the, the it's four ninety nine to buy and five ninety nine to rent. <laughs> that is weird. Are they running a sale or something right now? 
They might be. Maybe. I'm buying that, it right now. I'll let you know what I think. Let of me it know how week. that goes. Let me let me know how that goes. And man, I might snag that while I'm at it. I wouldn't know that. But no, it was just like it was one of the featured ones on the, at the library. So hold on, maybe it's your account. Maybe your account's weird. Oh, you got it at the library. I thought like you had like this expansive video library upstairs, and you were like, no, I'm no, just no, gonna go at the Carnegie up. Library in Beachview. <laughs> They, I just go, I just go in and see if they have because they put, usually put the newer ones like as featured on the on the top shelf, and they're okay. fairly available. Like Ghostbusters was there the the week it came out. So guys, visit your local library. It might be cooler than you thought it was. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, it's completely four ninety nine buy. That is actually kind of worth it. So uh, that is purchased in my library, and it's got uh, oh, it's got the, all the iTunes extras and everything. Ooh, I'm too nice. It's only five bucks. Okay, there's your awesome. <laughs> that's even more your awesome thing of the week, Missy. <laughs> Missy, what is your awesome thing of the week? That's not Crystal Pepsi. My awesome thing of the week that's actually tech stuff is, uh, it's it's this kind of cool thing that it teaches you how to play guitar, but instead of the other guitar playing options with like video game integration that you know you have to yeah. modify your your guitar. Yeah, this literally snaps on and it lights up where your fingers need to be for different chords. So this is on a regular guitar, but then on the, the, the things I think we're talking about is you actually have to buy a special guitar for it. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure that this was like a, just a little snap-on thing that you can you can put it on and it, it lights it up. I, I might be incorrect in that. I was looking at it and really super excited about it. Um, but yeah, they were at just a regular music shop with the guitars, and this is why I just assumed that it was a regular guitar. Mm-hmm. And you, you can plug it in. It's kind of like a video game play type of thing. They... they set it up and it lights up on the fret, which strings you need to, to hold down to get the chord progression. And are, are we watching the video over here? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you, you can see that the, the little buttons are lighting up underneath the strings to, to show you which ones to push down on in order to make ah. chords. So it's kind of a cool integration thing, especially for a visual learner that it, it does that sort of option with it. Um, Again, I, I want to look a little bit more in depth with it, but when I saw it, I, I really got excited because playing the guitar is something I've always wanted to do, and it gets really frustrating to remember the chord progressions and different things like that, and, and the just mass amounts. And I, I would get a month or two into it, and then it would just be like, I can't do this anymore. And this this might actually make it more video game ish. That I'm, I'm, my interest is peaked. <laughs> Some people just need that visual kind of help with it, right? And, and you know, this, this could really help with something like that. So, and, and there's an app for that, by the way. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, it links up with that. Uh, it's um, at over, over, uh, it's about 200% of its hundred or about $50,000 goal uh, that they were going for. So, uh, it looks nice. like. And the name, it's Fret Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's good. Yeah, I, I saw that, that, and I was like, "Absolutely, this is go- this is my awesome thing of the week." Mm-hmm. I want a ukulele version. Is there is there a ukulele version of this? That's that'd be what I need. That could be their next uh, Kickstarter option for it. I uh, need a different name though. Hmm. Mm. That's one to think about, I guess. The the grateful fret. Wow. The, okay, okay, we're getting close. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> yes. We'll work with okay. Them. There you um, go. Yeah. You guys you guys can keep that by the way, uh friends. Out there. <laughs> so there you go. Go check it out. It's on Kickstarter. And uh go look up Fred Zeppelin. Uh so thank you for that. All right. And okay, let's uh the 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 we're we just at? gonna ask Katie. No 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 no. I, I just didn't know what I was doing next. Slice on Broadway, that's what we're doing next. Yeah, it's just gonna say it's pizza. Thank time. you so much to our friends supporting the show, even though all of our friends stayed home this week. Well it's cold outside. Guys. <laughs> I guess it's cold outside. But thank you. <laughs> thank you so much to our friends out there uh slice on Broadway supporting uh pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza right here on broadway in beachview right here along the tracks that you've seen on the videos that we've been sharing over at sorgatron media's facebook page they're also down on the main street in carnegie pa as well as over pnc park uh right over by crappy actually he's been enjoying some of that right i have i have been that's uh, that's become our pizza shop and i, I could not be happy there you go you just gotta walk around a ballpark and you're there Yep. Yep. Easy. Uh, grab a pizza on the way home. Nice and easy. There you it. go. They do, do they deliver? Great thing. Do they deliver out of there? 
We don't, we have not asked. Um, it's just, I mean, I literally, I, I, I drive two blocks over, I grab the pizza and I go home and I'm home in 10 minutes yeah. reading. It's not, it, it does it, look that's, like, that's I mean, it's a little weird. To do. It, it is like a ballpark pizza shop too. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, there's a little, yeah. little bit different, you know, um, but yeah, that is a dine in takeout and um, they have domestic and craft beers down there as well. So mm-hmm. there you go. And I know they have a nice selection up here too. We headed up, didn't what did we go up there Friday? Was that this week or am I thinking the week before? <laughs> It was a week before. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're, we're hitting it up, like, kind of our side thing, making sure we... There's not a lot of places to eat, like, in Beachview anymore. Or Well, there's a couple, but, uh, you know, you can only have so much Mexican. The other places to take out only. And it's just like, I just want to go sit somewhere and watch the tea go by. And, and yeah. Oh, go ahead. The other nice thing about Slice is that in addition to the regular pepperoni pizza that we get each week, they have any of their like specialty hoagies Mm -hmm. you can get that in pizza form so like we get the gonzo quite frequently Mm -hmm. and we had that when we were having a wrestling watch party here um a few days ago we're gonna have to get sliced when we do the wrestling yeah i'm like i really want more sliced pizza so you need to take the camera off of me so i can have more sliced pizza i want to go get another slice sorry (laughs) yes tonight tonight might be a good night to find out if they deliver to my house (laughs) there you go tell them the awesome cast sent you yes (laughs) i'll give it a try i'll give it a try all right, you're just like no, sorry, we don't deliver your way. The awesome cat, the awesome cat sent me. Uh, let them know, please. Let them know. Slice on Broadway. Is there, is there a handshake? I should. I no, should no, do not really. not really. Not no, not okay. really. Uh, so hit them up. Slice on Broadway.com, PJs underscore slice on the Twitter. Okay, we have so much to talk about. We have, so we have, we have a lot of well, co- contributed wait, wait, stuff. Wait, wait, wait. What? Yes, 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 yes. Because yes. we we have an app of the week that I submitted. We do have an app of the week. Should I download the app of the week? Oh, I'm downloading the app of the week. You're downloading the app of the week. What is the app of the week? The app of the week. This is something that I've been looking for. And when I saw this in the app store, I was absolutely amazing. Um, We do a lot of image work. And my complaint about like Adobe Spark is that I don't have the option to select different images and like edit and cut in different parts of photos. I can just add to a background photo. So I can insert text, I can do that sort of stuff, but I really can't edit the image itself and put layered <laughs> images in. This app, and what, what's the name of the app that I saw? Pixomatic. Yes. That's, I think I've heard of it before, too. Yeah, Pixomatic allows you to actually do layers in edited on your phone. Um, so if, if you're looking to do something quick, you, you can do it right there on your phone without having to pull up a full version of Adobe on my laptop, which, again, for, for handy purposes right there in the palm of my hand on my phone. This, I, I, I drooled over this when I was doing my cards for your various social media accounts this week. Well, there you go. Is it iPhone only? I take it. I believe it's actually both iPhone and awesome. Android. And I see it's two ninety nine with some in app uh, purchases as well over there. Uh, Pixomatic, a layer based photo editor. So that's nice. So, <laughs> so it is like you can use layers like Photoshop a little bit more. Yes. That's cool. Which I really wish that the Adobe options for mobile would would do that. Um, have I would you totally looked at it. Have you looked at Photoshop Mix? I looked at it. Ooh. It's been a while. Because if you because I, I was doing some cool stuff with that, yeah, that might be worth a, a shot too. Uh, yeah, I might like give like, like shot. just the update or something like that. Sorry, somebody was saying something. Yeah, I was I was going to say that the Photoshop Mix will let you do some layers. Um, I use actually Pixelmator. Mm-hmm from time to time to do some layered work. But I, I think for, from Missy's perspective, I totally agree. Being able to have these tools on your phone and on the go, it's not always easy to, to pull out a laptop or to, to take an image, get it over there, get, work on it. it. Having these types of tools that are easy to use and straightforward um, uh, are, are amazing. Um, and, and the ease of use, I was pretty impressed too. If you go out to their website, um, the pixomatic.us, um, they have some nice tutorials there too, mm-hmm. of how to work in with layers and shadows and, 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 um, and some of their, uh, cloning, um, very, very cool stuff. Awesome. Yeah. So there you go. There you go. And, uh, like I said, we have a few more kind of submitted things, as well, I, uh, Missy, can you can you grab like uh, one or two of these that you really stick stick out? Well, for starters, uh, let me go ahead and let's start with Brandon's because he actually provided one this week. Mm-hmm. Um, the Absurd Soda Tap. So pretty much what this is, is it 
is a tap that taps your soda upside down so it preserves your carbonation mm -hmm. and you can push for the tap so that it pours just like a, a regular like a beer tap would Ooh. and it's for soda consumption uh so yeah i thought that was kind of interesting thanks for for sharing that over branded and that's over on observe.com up yeah up up seer up seer .com? yeah that's how i was pronouncing it i, I, so, I don't know um yeah he, he sent us over the i think it was a facebook video that we were able to track it down to an actual physical product. I want to point out um, the Coke bottle. There is obviously a Coke bottle is in uh, apparently Chinese or something. Nice. If you look at it, so so it kind of shows where they they, they they got this from. So awesome! Thanks, Brandon, for that. He's been uh, contributing a lot of really cool stuff to the um, to the um, uh, group and everything like that. So um, cool. Uh, let's see. We, what else we got here? I, we have to bring up the bacon toaster that, uh, Nostalgia Electrics oh did. Yes. Um, this, <laughs> this one, I absolutely love. It actually made one of our image cards for, for the week. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's a toaster for bacon. So you, you get your instantaneous toast. When you pop your bread in, you get your instantaneous bacon. Uh, the nice thing about this is it's it's set to kind of ready fast it, so you're not having to deal with putting it in the oven or putting it in the microwave. And the way that it drapes over, it also makes it a little bit healthier because it doesn't sit in the fat. It yeah. drips it down. So it's kind of like the form and grill-ish, uh, for, but specifically for bacon. But bacon. Isn't that what makes the bacon good? I was going to say that... <laughs> It I mean, my, my cardiologist might disagree, but the, the bacon fat is – that's like the best part. Because I mean, then you reuse the bacon, bacon fat and you fry your eggs in it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, there's an, yes. Empty, there's an empty pan on here that you can easily do that with. But, yeah, you know, there you go. It collects. That's all right. I like my bacon extra crispy, mm -hmm. and it's kind mm -hmm. of difficult to do mm -hmm. that and have it extra greasy mm -hmm. like that. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So yeah. This, this will allow me to get the perfect crisp. Without having to deal with the grease. Look and like at you said, all the grease, that grease can... that you would be consuming. Look at that. Yes. So, um, yeah, that, that was kind of my favorite thing. It's a toaster for bacon. And who doesn't love bacon? Mm -hmm. the, the, the only thing and, and I, the only thing that would worry me is it closes up so you, you can't see what's going on in there. And I have personally caused a, a fire or two. When, when cooking bacon on the grill. So that's yes. the only thing that would worry me is what happened. Like if you look over and see it, it, it smoking, you may be moments too late before it's then engulfed in flames. If um, th this, th this actually came up in a discussion uh, on a page for a, a, a neighbors of mine who, um, who make their make their own bacon? Um, they're ready. They're getting ready to go commercial. Uh, do yourself a favor and look up the Bacon Rebellion of 1709 on Facebook sometime. If you if you like bacon, <laughs> you should you should do this. But this came up uh, on, on the uh, on the original page for uh, for my, my neighbors, and um, uh, the guy Tim was like, "This sounds like a fire hazard to me." <laughs> Um, which, which is entirely possible. I, I, it's you, I think you really would kind of have to pay attention, but, um, it also sounds really tasty too. That, that, uh, I, I, Missy, I agree with the, uh, with the, uh, the, the crispy thing that, that would be a great way to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause that's, again, that's the way that I look at it is I make bacon as often as I can make bacon yeah. and I have to do two batches of the bacon. So I have the stuff that I take out prior to it being my set done. Because Sorg doesn't like it gotcha. as crispy as I do. So I gotcha. take out, I, I take part, Sorg's and then I leave mine in for like another five minutes or so to get uh -huh. it perfect. I, I want to be able to pick it up and not have it bend. Okay. So, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Go check it out. And uh, from there, I, 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 this is one. Was it Tom Royal on Twitter that contributed this one? Is uh, uh, Make America Kittens Again? I feel like this has popped up before around the election specifically because it does say election 2016. Um, and the example. So what's that? This this was one that I don't remember who tagged it. I think this might have been one but, that but I tagged. Basically, it's a Tom Crow Royal is the guy that did it. Okay, okay. So he, he's the one that, that did it. It is the it is uh, if you're if you're tired of 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 you know the news, you can't get away from it. You just and they're just like like really really uh, uh, interesting pictures of Donald Trump. You know, just turn every one of them into kittens. So uh, there you go. You can add it on your Google Chrome if you're using that. And uh, I'm actually kind of curious to see how well it works. So 
uh, you know, make make your make your Facebook kittens again the easy way with this. With this. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Uh, so from there. Oh, that's not what your note to Mike. Um, there's a lot of lot of stuff happening in the news. Uh, I want to touch on uh, Chilla, 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 Chromebooks. I've I've been seeing this about what they're doing with uh, like kind of more Chromebooks for education and everything this week. Yeah, I was I was surprised we didn't see more out of the Chromebook arena at, around the holidays because it seems like it's a good or or before back to school because it seems like it's a it's the normal time for us to see those types of devices but it's it seems like the t- today <clears throat> and yesterday um google's really been pushing chromebook information um the first was um they've released two two new devices for for education there's actually i think it's called the spin and the flip um there are devices that kind of remind me of the lenovo yoga series the way they kind of fold in half and they can kind of pop up as a tent. Um, they also, um, you can get a stylus and they're, they're touch screen driven. So kind of going after that surface type arena with, with a, by the way, side note, side note, I'm just scrolling through this. You see this picture right here. You see this on the side. It completely be a kitten. If, if, uh, <laughs> if I would have installed that last thing. So anyways, moving on, moving on. <laughs> We were just being like tech, but, circuit board, circuit board, <laughs> kitten, something about pizza. All right. That's the kind of internet that I want to live in. So go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. But um, obviously the, their price point's a lot lower than the Surface or the typical Windows type devices. <clears throat> so it was interesting to see um, Google kind of, they consider it doubling down on their Chromebooks and education with these two new devices. Um, in conjunction with that, they made an announcement that any of the Chromebooks released in 2017 are going to um, come with the the ability to run Android apps. So it's going to kind of bridge the gap from an application perspective. And they're, they're starting to pay a lot more attention to the UI when it comes to Android and tablets. It's something that, that hasn't been done extremely all that well. But I think it, when, when we get into the newer ver- the next versions of NuGet, um, we're going to see a lot more attention to detail when it comes to the to the tablet form factor. Um, so if you if you think about the natural progression, now you have a Chromebook. It has a touch screen. It has a stylus. Multiple vendors making it decent price point. Um, oh, and by the way, it runs all your Android apps that you you know and love as well. Mm-hmm. I, I think it makes a lot of sense for your for your average consumer especially if they're an Android user, to go out and look at this type of device. Um, this definitely didn't go unnoticed. Um, Microsoft quickly fired back, and I, I've, I've seen some some of the ways the articles have been written. It, it actually looks like Microsoft had this deal prior to Google's announcement. But it's definitely been brought to light um, due to a lot of the Google Chrome announcements. Um, Microsoft has, has made a push in education coming back with an uh, Intune, which is kind of their security and configuration lockdown and management um, infrastructure. Um, I think they're, they, they're targeting and, and offering uh, deals on, on devices that are $300 and below. I think the big devices they're pushing, and let me find it. <coughs> Excuse me. There's an uh, HP ProBook starting at 289 and then the HP stream 11 inch pro for education, which starts at 189. Um, some of those devices are touch screens um, and kind of have that same fold over feel. Um, but it, so it's interesting to see them kind of targeting that lower price market market as well. And education, it's it, one of the stats that in one of the articles, Chromebooks have, have achieved more than 50% of the market for new computers in the domestic K through 12 market. Um, so obviously they're making great strides in, in that, in that market for penetration. It'll be interesting to see. And we actually had a, a whole conversation about Adobe, um, years and years ago on this show, I think when I when I first started um, talking about how Adobe went after all the colleges, gave away all their stuff for free. Kids graduating out of college went to the workforce and said, you're using Quark? What? Um, where's all the Adobe software? Um, 
and and we quickly saw PageMaker and Quark and all, and a lot of those those applications kind of disappear. Yep. Um, so so it'll be interesting to see what the future brings if if companies that aren't Microsoft start to make greater strides in in the in the education market. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um <laughs> Sorry, I rolled into your other thing that you had posted here, but I don't want to get don't want to get deep into that one. No, I I, I think this is I mean it is interesting because this is a a, a a thing that that you know Max notoriously were everywhere, right? How many of us grew up on an Apple II, uh, for instance? But uh, you know it, it's Chrome is definitely the the Windows alternative. I think I initially success su- suggest for people. Right, uh, that that you know, hey, Apple's nice if you have the money for it, but let's be realistic, get a Chromebook, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and you'll get. I have not been able to successfully convert a lot of family members. Uh, my grandfather had it and had problems figuring it out. Uh, so, uh, but uh, but again, you know, it's 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 one of those things. Um, but uh, no, I, I think I think that's going to be some pretty good start. Yeah, good for education that there's like better tools out of out of any of these. <laughs> The interesting thing too I find about the Chromebook is obviously they come in at a lower cost because of a lower processor and <clears throat> and just uh, some cheaper materials because it takes a little less to run. I, you can get some ARM-based Chromebooks out there as well as Intel-based. It, where where I find it interesting is I've never and I've tried Chromebooks a lot. Um, in fact, I, I went out and purchased one just to uh, be more versed in some of the offerings from a from an enterprise perspective. I haven't I haven't ever had a bad experience from a browser or speed or crash perspective like I have with the same price point Microsoft devices. Now to your point, you can't get really a cheap Mac um, and they're all packed with eight to sixteen gigs of RAM and <coughs> high end processors. But when you get into that two hundred dollar price point, I feel like in a, in a lot of the cases that uh, you get what you pay for, right? <clears throat> Compared to a two thousand, a thousand or two thousand dollar laptop or desktop. Compared to a two hundred dollar laptop, um, I, I've just had really good experiences with the quality of the experience on the Chromebook. The the, the emphasis on education is really intriguing um, because. Uh, to, 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 to bring that kind of technology into a classroom. And I, and I think we're probably talking more, more about higher education than we are, uh, you know, public school systems, but um, anything that, that, that it sounds like it's that accessible uh, in, in terms of a, a, a price point um, is going to be a really helpful thing for someone who wants to work with that stuff in the classroom and, and provide that technology for, uh, for all of the students. Um, mm-hmm. that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a really cool way to, to get into that. Well, it's interesting too because I, I see see a lot of like the at least from a family member perspective, and a lot of the the people I see out or out and around that are, that are in their teens. It, it's they they wanted the iPhone because it was cool, and it's often often I've seen it's it's what their parents had, so it's also okay. what they become accustomed to. Mm-hmm. So if you start to push the Chromebook with Android apps into the classroom at an early age does it hit them younger and push them into that ecosystem sooner that's not a bad thing if you're <laughs> google um and, and, and actually and that that works that would that would work the same way as it did with the uh, with the adobe that you were talking about before um having having watched both PageMaker and quark die in my <laughs> in my in my newsrooms um but but yeah that's that's a that, that's a good point <laughs> All right. I, I don't know, Sorg. What do you What do you think from what you do? I mean, obviously, I don't think you're going to be editing high end video. No, on no, a no, no. Or, may, or maybe you will because it'll be on some kind of hosted solution. Yeah, maybe it'll be an option that I can move from or something like that. But the, I, I think about you. Know, I can't just drop into. Um, I <laughs> I just did my booking for this year for my trips uh, coming up for for uh, SAE. Um, and, and I really cheaped out on the hotels, right? Like, I'm like, I don't need a high, like, ah, the super is good enough for me. Right. And, uh, I don't expect like, Oh, I need to edit this thing. I have a Chromebook, have to use a cloud solution. Will that work? No, it's not going to work on a, on a hotel Wi-Fi. I, as it is, I'm going to have to load up an iPad to make sure I can watch things because I, how horrible that is even in the high end hotels. Right. I can't stream Netflix. Thankfully, 
Side note, Hulu says they're going to let you download stuff from there, right? Uh, from Hulu uh, eventually once they figure out all the rights. And Netflix just added uh, SD card support for uh, Android. So those are things I'm going to explore while I'm traveling. But but still, no, no I, I, I think uh, tools-wise, I'm on Mac because the tools I use are on Mac, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's it. Um, and there's an ecosystem there from the iPad to, to everything like that. So, yeah, it's kind of doing the same thing and getting me in that ecosystem that they're trying to trap these kids in. And, 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 and none of these, these kids are going to know that Apple ecosystem unless they have lots of money as kids at this point. Right? Yeah. So right. it's right. going to fade away. And, 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 you know, we've had that discussion on how many shows and everything about how uh, they're not providing anything to get you excited about Macs, except for just iPhones and stuff. Other than that being trendy, um, what's going to keep people in, in that, in that line? Um, and, uh, and this is the way, this is how Apple got popular to begin with. Right. And, uh, and, and, and that something more affordable like this is going to do this. No, absolutely. It's it, Android's Android's going to completely, completely grow with these tactics and Microsoft will do, um, something too, I guess. Uh, so, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. So I want to touch on a couple of things really quick. Uh, speaking of kind of a low low barrier of entry, uh, the new uh, Google Daydream VR helmet is actually going to be fifty dollars. So beating that Samsung Gear, um, I don't know what all it's compatible with just yet, other than um, the the Pixel phones, right? But um, these are these are some other deals they got going on. Does does, does fifty dollars include the? controller or is it just the uh, yeah i think it includes the remote the the the, the little kind of wii mote kind of thing that's yeah. got going on uh so yeah yeah it does so actually it uh, it seems like i think the headset hold on I've got my gear vr right here um i, I think that the headset obviously is going to have less build to it because it's that fabric kind of setup um mm-hmm. i think there's more electronics involved in what they're doing with the gear vr so yeah, because there's there's pass through charging that. The, oh yeah, there's oh yeah. So so they're they're taking out all, all the extra bells and whistles, and it just is what it is. And it's it's made of lighter stuff. It's probably easier to make the fabric than it is the 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 uh, molded plastic that this this thing is. And then you have a controller on, on on top of it, so it turns into a little bit of a better deal. And in the long run, should be more compatible than this thing is for Samsung, right? Because it's only Samsung devices. <laughs> Plus, it's only Samsung devices, but I think the thing that the gear has, and correct me if I'm wrong, obviously people will continue to write for the, the Daydream spec, mm-hmm. but I think with the Oculus store, right. I think it gives the gear a little bit of a Absolutely. additional additional arena and to get developers in there because they they look at it as an oculus type device as it is the first big story that i saw was um was hey um um stop talking or everyone explodes like they never get the title right of that the bomb one i like i like like i saw an article like is is the best game on daydream i was like well great it was the best thing on oculus last year it was a great great, it was the best thing on samsung gear earlier this year it's going to be the best thing on on every new platform like where are the new games because I feel like everything that's popping up that's interesting on any of these platforms came out two years ago when everybody was on betas and SDKs. And and welcome, welcome to being on betas and SDKs. <laughs> but yeah, but, but, but is there, everyone else. That's true. But is there no? I, I guess okay. Now it's open to more people, or they're experiencing it. They're they're kind of recycling this stuff. Um. So so okay. I I, I guess that makes sense. Um. But but still, like I guess that's I guess one of the that's one of the same problems I have with loading loading OS betas early on is like six months later when it comes out and everyone's like, Oh, look at this. Look at this. And like, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> you get jaded. That's, that's you get so jaded. Six months ago. That's the problem, right? Absolutely. Lastly, Amazon made a dash button just for uh, uh, boxes of assorted candies. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, you know, you why, why get, why get a loved one, uh, an actual box of candy when you can get them infinite boxes of candy. <laughs> it's like giving <laughs> Garfield the pan of infinite lasagna. It's the, it's the gift that keeps on giving right out of somebody's bank account, at least. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. See, what would be in- more interesting is, is if they built it as a plug on to a scale, 
that you put your there box you of candy on there and you when it got light enough, it would trigger the button to order a new one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like, stamp, wait, wait, so stamp, Di- diabetes. stamps.com. Blood sugar, blood sugar monitors? Blood sugar monitors for, for diabetics. <laughs> Bring it all together. Hey, this There's, goes with the thing I didn't yeah. talk about with the wearable device that helps you with your supplement intake. Uh, oh. so, ah, I'm sorry, Missy. Okay, here's and by the way, don't pay attention because I have Valentine's Day figured out now. Exactly. Here's here's the question. As as the wife, what did you do or what are you going to do that you feel that you need to get me a button to order chocolate? <laughs> I don't, it, it's a pretty wide um, um, array there, right? It's kind of the catch all, I think. <laughs> So, um, but no, that's that's awesome. That, that that that's a great. That's a good question. I'm going to suggest now if they, that now if they can just partner with the local florist. Mm-hmm. Every time yeah. you're in trouble, you can hit a button I'm gonna, and, and have I'm flowers, gonna, flowers and candy there the next day. Because I, I, I'm finding in my Uber riding on the weekends, um, I've I've turned into the counselor a little bit. Um, sometimes relationship wise, and I'm I'm waiting that for that. Sense. I'm waiting for the right person to say, "Hey, have you heard of this dash button thing?" <laughs> yeah, so let, uh, let me help you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, let me help you. By the way, I'll give you a link, my Amazon link for Awesome Cast while we're at it. So this may be an affiliate. Uh, so uh, guys, it is so much fun talking with you guys on here. Um, so much going coming on up. Uh, no, no, all that stuff was last week, actually. Uh, the stuff this week is for wrestling stuff <laughs> I am thinking of. There's um, no stuff coming up. There's no stuff going on. Actually, everything going on this week is around wrestling that I'm aware of. Uh, but please go check out events and everything like that going on uh, on Awesome Cast, Sorgatron Mia. We just had our coffee this past weekend, talked with a gentleman about social media the whole time. It was really cool. Uh, we'll have another one announced here uh, for February. You can come with us free coffee. Uh, Sorgatron Media provides, and uh, sometimes uh, chill in the guys uh, drop in. You can chat with some of us podcasters and uh, ask questions about what we're creating and everything. Tell us what you're creating and the people around work hard pittsburgh drop in a lot too and uh the coffee attracts them that's the thing from our friends black forge um and what else is go a lot of great events boot camps and evening with pod camps over at podcamppittsburgh.com my chat from last week the boot camp for developing your podcast uh is available it was a facebook live it is available on both the podcamp youtube and facebook page and for those of you who follow the PodCamp community, we have dates. <gasps> they, will be, they will be announced soon. So uh, make yes, sure to keep an eye out on, on the website, can we, can the Twitter. Sl- can we slip them out to the live stream? That, this that, is, can, this be, is, that can be part of this our school. This is sooner than ever. This so, is huge. Yeah, we're, we're huge. on. We're, there's some things happening this year that yes. we're on okay. top of. So okay. we're making that happen, making that happen. So Pot Camp Pittsburgh is coming up in a big way, and we got some plans for that already. Do, do, did you want to give them the dates? No, I'm going to give them to them <laughs> off air for the people on live. That's why you need to join us here live.awesomecast.net or on the Facebook page for live uh, every Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern time. On through until oh. I rush off to watch SmackDown. Wait, do, do you know who else would have access to this content? Who else would have access? Gold. Gold, awesome cast gold. Ooh. Over uh, patreon.com slash awesome cast on the coffee club. I haven't memorized these yet. It's in. It's at the top of my dock, and I'm not there. <laughs> the um, the uh, Yes, the coffee club at the $5 level. You do get the gold. The gold content, the extra stuff going on. So please uh, go check that out. Um, Uncle Crappy. What's coming up? What should people check out for you? Uh, actually, I, I have one thing that, that is coming up in the very, very short term. Um, uh, you guys obviously uh, being involved with PodCamp, no Chris Dilla of Bocktown. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm drinking a beer from a glass. Uh, the original Bocktown <laughs> will close uh, probably on Tuesday night, uh, the last day of January. If you are a fan of craft beer in Pittsburgh, um, please take a moment to get out to Robinson. It's in the, uh, the plaza right across the parking lot. <laughs> Uh, from uh, Target, the Target store out there, um, and have one last beer with Chris. She was a she has been a leader not only in the beer world in Pittsburgh, um, but a, a leader in uh, business using social media uh, to promote what she's doing to uh, build a community around what she's trying to do. Um, she's had some unfortunate uh, problems with uh, with uh, uh, the, the trying to put together a lease in her current spot. So she's got to shut down. So we've got a, a few days left. Go out and have one more beer with Chris. Uh, we're going to be out there on Tuesday night, which looks like it'll be the last night. Um, so maybe I'll see you there. 
There you go. There you go. Yeah, check that out. She's been she's been amazing over the years, um, and uh, it was you know good to support that business. Uh, I know mm-hmm. I would always drag people to Bachtown out there and Rob Vincent here and there, family mm-hmm. mem- from family mm-hmm. members mm-hmm. to friends, and uh, I have, I have done out. the same. Absolutely. So, and of course, check out Mike Pound PG on the Twitter, Uncle Crappy on the Twitter. Please do, please do. Always happy to hear you. And look for his name and beer me over on the uh, Post Gazette website, or if you, Woo. or if you like newsprint. Yes, Get yes, we do, we do that too. Yes, we yes. do that. Too. If you're one of those hipsters that has uh, newspapers and bought cassette tapes that made that rise this year. <laughs> <laughs> we, love, we love all you guys cassette tapes all time rise in sales uh, just this year in 2016 amazing thank you Guardians of the Galaxy John Chichilla at Chill on the Twitter ChillaTech.net John Chichilla on the Facebooks yes. come talk to me come friend me let's talk tech he let's is, talk gadgets he is the gadget guy ask him about the gadget things he's the one if, if, if I know we've gotten messages like which Android thing should I should I buy He's the one to answer because he has his hands on a lot of them. And and, uh, home automation as well. And if you're doing any kind of home construction, home improvement, hit me up too because I'm probably going to start bringing some of that those concepts into the show too for those who are interested. Or you from can, a technology perspective. Or you can be in our chat and you, people are just kind of helping each other in here because uh, 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 Aaron and Ron are just uh, kind of uh, chatting about devices and everything, the the update their their S sevens and everything like that. So it's our own kind of tech support group, and you can join that group, Awesome Cast on uh, uh facebook groups or awesome cast on twitter and and we'll we'll loop in all the people that are like hey i talk to this person hey talk to this person the network is mm-hmm. wide on all kinds of technologies here and i think it's a really good place for you to start i thought you were gonna say something oh, no, thank you producer missy pulling things together of course <laughs> thank you our friends thank you check out soulgatronmedia.com for everything going on my friends over at sidekick media services slice on broadway and the such and uh, thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.